Hi guys, Sammy from Kuala BJJ, teaching and learning about Jiu Jitsu. And today we continue this series about the stepping stone in Jiu Jitsu. What you need to know on every level. Uh, we start to talk today about the two year marks around blue belts. Uh, it will be a long discussion, or probably a few videos. And today we start talking about the blue belt test. From this, we'll derive what is the knowledge and the skill that you need to get to the two year marks. But let's start, as always, please subscribe to the channel. It's really helped to know that people are up there and engaging. Uh, leave some comments, send me an email. Um, it's, so, it's so great to get a, a reaction from the audience. Anyhow, the blue belt test. So let me start by saying that it's, I don't think it's really of a test. I don't think that people need to fail it. Uh, a good teacher know the skill level of, of every student. So I know when, when a student is ready for the test. Uh, but I want to describe the, the test that I'm conducting. Uh, it's kind of a unique idea. Basically, it's, it's a two-month process. <clears throat> Usually, I, I will come to one of the students and say, Hey, brother, uh, you're going to be a blue belt. In two months from now, you're going to have a blue belt. But, here's the test. Those are 10, around 8 to, eight to 10 tasks you need to accomplish. Let's say, in the next week, uh, whenever you roll, you need to try to, to get a... Uh, an X pass, or try to in the next week get six sweep from Huffer. So you get those tasks and you need to accomplish them. But it's not a test, right? You can do one of the tasks, all of the ten, or none of them. No matter what, two months from now you're going to get your blue belt. What is the idea? First of all, it's a process, right? So it's create more, more f great, get the feeling, great, accomplish, uh, to, to get the achievement. But it's a learning process. You have more time with your instructor talking about those ideas, about those moves, how to learn, what you need to learn, what you need to improve, get deeper thoughts about those things, and you get more time with your instructor. So the process itself is, is a, a different learning process, another way to get deeper ideas Deeper, different drills, different way to, to practice you, you need to, to roll differently and to learn. So let me uh, show with you a document and describe the test. I will do like this, kind of a magic. Now you can see um, a simple document and here are a few of the moves and I will describe them and, and the different ideas that are related to, to those tasks. Why do you choose those tasks? Basically there, I have a pool of like 20 to 30 different tasks and I tailor for every student uh, the tasks that are relevant to him, but here are the general ideas. So let's start with, with a, the, a very simple idea, like I talked before, uh, look on item 5, free pass, great name, it's like a game, <laughs> very funny, never mind, uh, you want to pass a sitting guard. So the idea is, I don't know, you're going to 3 class a week, every class is like 20 to 30 session, session of flowing, great. During this time, get five clean passes starting from open guard like you standing your opponent is sitting and you're going all the way to side control or mount or whatever you can choose your own pass or some or some of the guys will recommend go for an x pass and knee cut uh, no a bull or riding pass whatever the, the main idea is you're moving from standing to side now what you're going to learn first of all passing is so important you have to improve it but a lot of students come and say, yeah, I didn't know I have such a good X pass. I always go to some smashing and it takes me like two minutes to pass the guard and suddenly I engage in an X pass and I'm going to pass. So this is a very simple task. Item one is also not so complicated. Let's take six successful moves from half guard. Uh, any sweep that you like, like the handshake sweep, electric chair, whatever. Get to half, half guard and get six sweeps. And usually I will define the level of your opponent, let's say it will be, if you're going for a blue belt, so get a, an experienced white belt, someone who's practicing like a year, get into half guard and get some sweeps. But, and here's the, the first deeper idea, so in, in the lower level you improve your half guard game. Uh, I really, uh, let's come back to me, great, <laughs> it's like a magic, Woo! and I really love the half guard, I think it's, it's like a, the most basic uh, move and submission uh, position that you have to use. Um, but in different schools, if you use more of a delay, a guard, a close guard, whatever. 
Go your best girl. What's the difference between, between uh, the task of get submission from half guard and passing? A good student, if you tell him get five passes, what he will do? He say, okay, I'm going to work on my X pass, I will drill it more. Maybe I'll watch a few videos on YouTube to learn, to, to remember the details about the X pass. Now I come to class, at least half of the row I will start standing up and I will work on my X pass. Easy. Now, Let's go to the task of, of doing sweep from half guard. It's a bit more complicated. Again, you can work on a, on, on a sweep, but if you want to execute it, first you need to get to the half guard. So, you will also have to work on establishing half guard. So maybe you have to drill it. Think about it. Finding a new way to regard. How am I going to get from, I don't know, bottom side to half guard, from bottom mount, push the knee and get the half guard. Maybe from the sitting guard, I will walk on way to, to pull him toward me and, and move him from sitting guard into the half guard and so on. So, I have to learn another element. If I want to improve a specific position, usually I also have to improve how to get to this position. Or, and this is another level of, of thing that I want students to learn, understand the, the culture of your gym. In most schools, it's, it's totally acceptable to come to a rowing partner and say, please, let's start from half guard, I want to improve this, this element of the game. Now, it, it's some silly to say it, but many of the students feel embarrassed to do it. No, 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 we start rolling as usually from standing up or from sitting up and so on. Um, just asking your partner, let's start from this position, is priceless. And you should learn to ask. It's, it's like dating. You have to get past the, the, the first stage of, of start the conversation. But I'm not going to this example. It will make this video inappropriate. Anyhow, you need to learn to start from half guard. Now, if you watch uh, the, this video series, we also have a, a great video talking about um, getting more out of your role. And I will emphasize that at least half of your role should be specifics. Like starting from SI, working only on Kimua, or starting from De La Riva, whatever. But again, you cannot wait you, that the instructor will say, start from half guard. Maybe now you are working on Spider or, or De La Riva or the Lasso Guard or whatever. So, learn this ability to talk with your partner and let's start from half guard. So important. Let's go back to the test. Uh, so, if you look on, on the other element, uh, the choke. Right, you need air, element two. I will say get three, work on three different kind of choke. And let's say get three out of each, or four out of each. And it can be any choke, guillotine does, X choke, the anaconda, clock choke, whatever, notes out. But I will choose for every student at least one of them. And I will always keep two elements, like the guillotine and the dust or other. And let me uh, explain. So, back to me. Again, great. Um, so, in the low level, what this task is all about? Improve your chokes. You need to be able to submit, guys. No, so let's improve the choke. So easy. But let's think about the different, let's say, the dars and the guillotine. There's a clear uh, setup for the dars, a, 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 an obvious trigger. We can side, start from side control. It's getting the underhook. I will take a dars. Simple. Again, if you talk about the previous item, it's, it's forced me to start from, to get to side control. Now, passing the guard, starting the side control, letting get the underhook, and then starting to go for the dars, it's a long process. If you roll for five minutes, maybe it will happen once or twice. So again, if you just want to start a normal roll and get the dars, it will be very rare. So probably in this task, you will also have to ask the partner, let's start from side control. And in many cases, you will say, please take the underhook and let's start from there. And I want to see the reaction. Maybe I can take the dust, maybe not. It's, it's different with different partners. In, in many cases, you want to say, let's start with the underhook, but maybe it will be a bit uh, not so natural for them. So let's start from normal side control. Maybe I will fake, I, I will give them entry. I don't know. But anyhow, first, you have to get to side control by passing or by asking them. But there is a clear uh, trigger for the dance. Compared to a guillotine, I don't know, I really love the guillotine. I did a lot of guillotines, but there's almost not 
a very simple setup for a guillotine. I have one great from butterfly, but usually you have to grab the guillotine. You have to see, you force your opponent into a mistake, into opening, exposing an neck, and then you grab the guillotine. So it's some moves you can build them step by step very slowly and there's a clear trigger, your mind will know exactly the position. So even for beginners, it's very easy to recognize the timing for a dart. I will get the side control, you will take the underhook, now it's the time for a dart. And I, I can feel it half a minute before, when the side control is starting to go for the underhook, okay, there's going to be an opportunity for a dart. The guillotine are so rare, there's a split second where his neck is, is exposed. So I always tell to my student, if you want to improve your guillotine, you have to come with a mindset. In this role, I'll always search for the guillotine. I will keep hunting for the neck. In almost every position, it could be guard, half guard, side, butterfly, whatever. I see an, an opening in the neck, I grab it. This is the way to, to uh, improve your guillotine. It's such a short trigger, such a short time of, of in, the, in the match when the, the opponent neck is open, so grab it immediately. Right? So, the other element in this task is to learn that some moves, you have to be very aware of all the role to them and search for them. Like the guillotine. And there are a few more like this. Let's go back to the test. I will not cover all of the, all, all of the tasks, but the other uh, family of tasks will be Jiu-Jitsu fundamental, like winning on points, right? Or if we go back to, to the uh, previous video saying what you have to know around six months, so if you look on item six is survival, right? Um, we, we talk about it. around six months, I want to be able to survive from side control. So this element, I will say to my student, take an experienced guy, someone who is better than you, an experienced blue belt, and survive this top side. I will start from side control on the button, ask him, please take side control, and now for two minutes, I want to survive. Not letting any more advance, don't, don't let him submit you, and especially don't let him to improve his position for mount or back control. You should be able to survive in side control, and opponent is a bit better than you. And item seven will be the other side. I want to be able to be on side control and just pin my opponent. Old school like judo, just like just keeping on side control. There's another video if you if you know if you saw it, uh, hunting the deer. Why do I always fail this submission? When I talk a lot about if you want to improve your submission from side control, first of all you have to improve the time that you can spend in side control. So improve your control time. So the the seventh task will be uh, being able to pin your your opponent. Controlling side control and staying there. And um, element, uh, another important element is, is the Jiu Jitsu point system. Let's go back to me. So I can three, exactly my point, winning by point. Now you don't have to be a competitor uh, to learn the point system in Jiu Jitsu. In every, it doesn't matter IBJF or other organization, the point system is usually going with the logic of Jiu Jitsu. You get point by advancing your position moving in this hierarchy of position toward the submission. So, a good way to improve basic idea in Jiu-Jitsu is playing to point, for points. And again, met, I don't know, met culture, go to your uh, rolling partner and say, now we're working on points. Please roll for and fight for every point. Don't, let me, don't give me easy point, try to take points from me. What is the benefit? First of all, you have to create this linear progression, moving from you know, passing the guard, take a takedown, pass the guard, establish side control, going for the back and then going for the, for, the, for the kill, for the submission, and preventing point from your opponent, stop the sweeps and, and so on. But also working on, on the short times, like the, the, the three second rule. I want to be able to, whenever I pass my guard, for, whenever I pass my opponent guard, to stabilize the position and wait for two seconds. And it's great instinct. The, the, the most important second to fight for a guarding is while you're being passed, not after it's a complete side control. So fighting for, and a lot of times when we roll, I just pass my guard, I, I, don't, I don't have the energy to fight. No, this is exactly the point when you're losing points and a very important skill. I don't want to avoid, I don't want to fight for side control. 
The minute that my guard is getting past, I want to fight again. Or he took my back, but don't, don't let him put inside the, the hooks. I will fight for the hooks. So we won't get the points and it will be much easier to, to escape the, the, the back control. So understanding the point system will emphasize the very critical point, uh, time in a match when you have to fight, like preventing the hooks, like regarding before you establish side control, don't let him establish the three second uh, uh, control time and so on and so on. Great task. Now, there are many other tasks, if you noticed before, I emphasized the butterfly guard uh, for sweeping and so on. Also breaking uh, the close guard and any other a major guard that you used to play and passing some guards. And s the basic attribute for a blue. Let me summarize everything. So basically there are four learning uh, artifacts from, from this task. The first one is pure knowledge. You have to know some move, some submission. So if you, you have to know some submission like, I don't know, Dals, Guillotine, x Guillotine, Triangle, Kimura, whatever. Uh, you have to be able to fight from at least two different guards, let's say the half guard and the butterfly. Um, you have to know to break the majority of guards. Still, I, I, the blue best level, I will not emphasize every known guard, but the major one, a close guard, the Laiva guard, uh, and so on. And you have to know to pass some of them. Another discussion is that you have to know to break all the guards. You have to know how to break a spider guard, but you don't have to create a pass from the breaking. Maybe you just go to an open guard and pass from there. So, break the major uh, family of guards, but pass only a few of them. And you just fundamentals. Fight for points, be able to sustain uh, pressure from top and be able to pin your opponent from the top. So survive on the bottom and pin your opponent from top. This is knowledge. So the first level, the first uh, benefit from this test is pure knowledge. Second is the learning how to learn. If you want to improve your, your real naked choke, you have to get more to the back. So improve your back taking. If you want to improve your half guard sweeping, get Walk on regard into half guard, or learn to ask your opponent, please let me uh, let, let us start from half guard, let us start from side, and so on. So, first element knowledge, second element learning how to learn. The third element is the, the, the process itself, thinking and talking about those ideas. You don't have to understand or agree with the, this discussion about guillotine versus dogs. Someone can say, No, I have great setup for guillotine, I don't know what you're talking about. Great, but thinking about the difference, recognizing that some moves have a very slow, clear trigger, while others are very fast. Starting to notice the difference between them, starting to notice that learning a guillotine may be different from learning a dance will improve tremendously your learning skills. Thinking and talking with your instructor, instructor about those ideas is highly important. And finally, it's a process. So the first, uh, the fourth element will be a process. It's a two-month process. It will take time. Great. When you finally get your blue belt, you will be more excited and life is about feeling. Uh, I would say that in purple belt, there's, I have different, much more complicated tasks. Let's say, walking on a counter. Uh, I will start an X-Pass, he will counter with one leg, I will go to the other, the, uh, either side. It's a simple move that we always drill, but really getting it in a roll, it's, it's so hard. Because you need to find a good opponent and uh, even, even drilling with the right partner, it, it's much more complicated. So, in the future, we will create a video about the purple belt test. It's much more complicated, much more complicated task and much more complicated test, but it's the same idea. It's a learning process to work on the skill that you need. We'll have another different, another different video about the knowledge itself of a blue belt, but you can derive everything from here. What do you not need to know in a blue belt level? Uh, you have to have at least, I will say, two different guards, uh, a close quarter guard like the half guard and a bit farther distance like the butterfly guard. Few submission like chokes and submission, few sweeps from every guard. Uh, be able to control someone from side control and 
surviving site control, few passes, few ground breaks, and so on. This is the basic knowledge, knowledge and the basic skill set. A very long video. Uh, so, just to conclude, uh, you don't really need a test. You need a process, a learning process that will benefit you as a student and, and as a teacher. And you can enjoy it. So guys, please subscribe to my channel. Leave any comment. Oh, one final thing. We had a previous version of, the vi of, of this video. And some guys asked me, can I take the test? Sure you can. If you just got your blue belt or you're ready to get your blue belt, try to do it. You can email me and I will help you ask if you have any question, but just do it. Take the, the, the image from, from the video, we'll add it to the comment maybe, and try to do it. It will benefit you, I promise it will benefit you, and if you need help, just email me and uh, I will put the email in the comments. And it, if it's help, I did my job. So. Have a great day, have a great training day, enjoy the process, see you next time, Oops.